guys, what's going on? Back on old Project Red Fire today. Today we're addressing the cooling fans. There's two big ones on the heat exchanger and one on the transmission cooler and they are just ridiculously loud. And the way this car's wired up, you turn on the key, you start the engine, you know, first thing in the morning, cold, and they all just turn on full power and it sounds like an airplane taking off. That's all you hear is just these fans and they're going, so it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. Actually, I do know what to do about it. So, since we have an MS3, this is an easy fix. You don't have to build custom electronics, you don't have to do anything. But we do need a little trip to the junkyard, so let's head there first and then we'll get going from there. Well, we're out here at the junkyard looking for Ford Fusion fan controllers for our Project Red Fire. We're going to bring it up into the 20th century with some modern fan control. Sometimes the whole front end's gone, there's nothing there. And other times, it's sitting right there. Get real lucky. Looks like a pretty clean one. Try to get this guy out. All right, I think I did pretty good. I ended up with nine of them. Ford Fusions, Mercury Milan, Lincoln Zephyr, all of them, I hit all of them. <laughs> I believe there's some Chevy versions out there, Corvettes and other cars that have them too, but I'm not too familiar. I know these ones. Why do I get so many? Because I always use these things. Uh, sometimes several. So like this car, we're gonna put two in here. One on the heat exchanger fans and one on the engine cooling fan. Two huge advantages of these. The main one, of course, is soft start. So when it goes to turn a fan on, even if it's requesting full power, it'll turn on real soft and just kind of ramp up to speed. That hit on idle and the stumble and all that annoying electrical spikes, all gone. Fixes that, perfect. The other thing is you can control the speed of these. So we're gonna feed it a pulse width signal from the mega squirt, and it's gonna tell this thing how fast or how slow to spin our fans, which is awesome, because what we'll do is we'll set up tables based on engine coolant, an intercooler coolant for the heat exchangers and the fan will basically just ramp up with the coolant and it'll reach an equilibrium point where the fluid stays at a constant temp and the fans running at a constant temp and they're not full powered so it's not very loud you don't have to go snap on full power off full power off that stuff's annoying and it's all going to be gone these fans are going to work great and they're not, you're never going to hear them again even when the car is hot that's the great thing uh you would really have to push the car harder and, and tear on it amazingly to get the temperatures up there. You don't realize that, but on a regular car, you know, when it just needs a little bit of fan, it's snapping on full power every time. So you kind of forget about that. This fixes all of that. Real excited about it, as I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> so uh, let me show you a wiring diagram, how easy these things are to wire up, and uh, then we'll start tearing into this and actually get it done. Okay, this is the wiring diagram. It is literally that simple. If you look at an actual controller, there's four heavy wires on it, Two black, two red, and then one skinny little red wire. That's exactly how you wire it up. The two center ones go down to the battery. And yes, you can hook that up directly to the battery. I've put an amp meter on there and tested it. It won't drain your battery. As you hook it up, it's a few milliamps and it trickles down to microamps. It draws nothing. You're going to be fine. You don't have to do key on relays or any of that. The other two wires can go out straight to your fan. And then that skinny little red wire, it goes down to your MS3 to one of the PWM or pulse width modulated outputs. Remember MS3's Megasquirt family of devices has ground outputs, which is perfect because this fan controller needs a ground output. It's like it was made for it. So that's all you do. Battery, fan, MS3, and then let's configure the MS3. Well, it looks like our transmission cooler has a temperature sensor right here. So we'll go ahead and wire that in. It'll be just one less fan running constantly. All right, we got the fans and controllers and everything wired up. So let me show you what's all going on here before I close this up. The transmission cooler, or fan, excuse me, is not very loud and not much of an issue. So I don't have it computer controlled. I have it wired into the temperature sensor here, so it will at least only come on when it's needed, uh, but we don't, really don't need to do much more than that. That'll take care of that one. These intercooler fans right here, I have a controller wired up right here on the side, and it takes care of this one. And then for our main engine cooling fan, over here on the passenger side, we have a controller set up right here. And this particular one is actually fed power by the factory CCRM, which is now controlled by the MS3. Let me show you why I did that. Inside of the MS3 computer, if we go over here under our fan settings, fan control, 
I wanted to make use of this fan control option still. And the reason is because this will supply power to our, con our fan speed controller. And the reason is, look at these few cool features like, like shut the fan off when it goes over a certain throttle to save power, you know, send all the power to the wheels. Or when you're over a certain mile an hour, turn it off. These were cool features I wanted to keep. And of course we have an option here, um, allow the fan to run when the engine is off. I only said that to yes for testing, I wouldn't normally leave it that way. But that's good to see. And so what I did was here, I set the fan to turn on at about 170 and go back off at 160. But what really controls the fan is if we go over here to advanced engine, go down to the uh, generic PWM output. And this is where we can program this table. So you can see we got coolant temperature here by RPM. Now that's kind of fancy, but I don't really need to increase the fan speed by RPM. So I just have the whole row the same as you can see. But as the temperature goes up, See right there, it increases the fan speed till we get up to 90% duty cycle, which the in controller interprets, these particular ones interpret as 100%, and they will go full power. So that's pretty neat. So you can see here as the coolant climbs up, and when it drops down below that, the fan controller here will turn it off. For the heat exchanger fans, I did the same sort of thing, except right here I have the intercooler fluid from the new in a cooler temperature sensor I installed on the reservoir. We'll have a video on that one, you can see how that works. So essentially, same thing, as the, the fluid increases, these temp the duty cycle of the fan will. Now these are sort of baseline numbers that I picked, just kind of using other cars. I've never had one with the intercooler up front here in the engine like this, so we may have to tweak these accordingly. This is just a, a guess starting point. And you notice that this one has zeros and zeros. The reason for that is, key on, engine off, see the low RPM, I don't want the fan running and draining the battery while the key's just turned on. But then, the one down the bottom here is on the lowest temperature setting, and that's so that when you throw ice in the system or it's really cold, you don't have to worry about the fans, they won't pull ambient air through and heat up your ice system, it'll be right here. So I can demo this right now, you can see we're sitting in this cell right here, it's highlighted in yellow and there's a circle that shows you the current conditions. So let's just put, say, Oh, something small, like 10% in there. And then watch that control is gonna take over. And there it goes. And you can see how quiet they are. Just like when we've demoed these put in the past on our Fox bodies and stuff. And we could, you know, bump it up, let's say uh, 50%. And there it goes, you can hear it ramping up. And of course we could go all the way to 90%. We should be able to hear it ramp up. Yep, you can hear that. There it goes. <laughs> Alright, let me set it back to zero. And down they go. You can hear how they gently ramp down. We can go back to the engine coolant one for the main engine cooling fan. Now this one doesn't have a zero column and it's already got 20, but it's off because of this fan section here. So I'll tell it, oh, we'll put a low value in there. Let's say like when it's 40 degrees out it can turn off and when it's 50 degrees it can turn on. So that means it can turn on now and go up to 20%. And although we can't see it, you can hear it. It's not very loud, but this fan is on. And notice that it doesn't have any like squealing, pulsing, or anything weird. Those controllers output a very high frequency that runs the fan super smooth. So let's go ahead and bump that up. I don't know, let's do like say 50%. You can hear it ramping up. And just for uh, completeness, we'll bump it all the way to 100% power. And you can hear it. Put my original 20 value back in there. Of course, the fan will still be running. So I have to tell it over here on the fan control. Don't actually turn on until you get to, say, 170. Now we'll hear it spin down. Oh. No, we won't, because the fan off says 40. <laughs> uh, how about we change that to about 160? Now the fan will turn off. And there it's off. And I'm going to change this allow fan when engine off to no, because normally I don't want that to be able to come on when the engine's off. So there we have it. Now we can go ahead and get this thing fired up. We shouldn't have these uh, Boeing airplane sounds of the car idling and trying to warm up. 
and normal driving, it should be quiet. We should just hear the engine, blower, and exhaust. So I'm excited for this. Let's try it out. We got the car fully heat soaked, went for a good drive. Uh, it's completely hot, no hardly any fan sound. It's great. Let's look at the laptop here. I got two bar graphs I set up here that represent the, uh, that one's the engine cooling, and this one is the intercooler uh, fans on the heat exchanger. And you can see how, look, it's about one third of the what it needs and maybe a half power on, the, on that fan. Now look at the temps, everything's running great. That's how it should be. All right, so now say you have an MS2 or MicroSquirt based car. You won't have the PWM tables that I just showed you like what's on this car. So I have a MicroSquirt car right here. You're not out of luck. You can still make it work. Let me show you how. Very similar to the 92 Fox, I went ahead and built a little Arduino module here, but this is a little bit different. So there's an Arduino right there, and it's producing a PWM signal that it's sending out to the, the fan controller. However, it has an additional piece right here. I have a CAN-based receiver over here, and that communicates with the MS2 via CAN. So through the CAN data, it's pulling the temperature of the engine, and then it makes a decision, the Arduino does with my code, makes a decision from there, and it sends the, the PWM to the fan for how fast it wants. But what's nice is, since it's CAN-based, you can essentially grab whatever CAN data you want. So I grab RPM, um, throttle position, and then I can do other smart features with that. So I just wrote into the code, you know, if the if you don't see any RPM, shut the fan off. You know, that's a key on condition. You don't want the, the battery draining. And if you see you know, an excess of throttle, like maybe 70% or more, turn the fan off. You know, the driver wants full power. That's all stuff you can just write in the code in the Arduino. So. You can still kind of make it work. I'll uh, I'll put a link to where I found some of this hardware and even some sample code I think I have up there on the web. I'll link to it. So there you go.